So tell me about your experience as a dean and or as a dean president. What were the biggest challenges you faced and what were some of your proudest accomplishments at both Texas Tech and Drexel? Well, at Texas Tech, I was able to become the dean through the development of a large department in family medicine, developed a clinical base and, and scholarly activity and educational base there. And that was a, a very interesting process because I never set out to be a dean of a medical school. Had I thought this when I was in residency or in practice in the Indian Health Service, I would have never believed that I would have been a dean of a medical school. Uh, but through that process was gradually provided more and more opportunities and eventually became the dean. The challenges there uh, were, were many uh, that, that are confronting all academic health centers. One was financial in terms of having stresses on the practice plan and providing sufficient resources to fund the research enterprise. Uh, we also had a challenge to participate in the development of the second medical school in El Paso, which I participated in. There were many people that helped to put that together, which was an enormous challenge and accomplishment for that institution. And uh, to identify ways to be able to improve the educational program, so help to initiate the first transition for the redesign of the medical school curriculum while I was there. And certainly as I transitioned here in, in Philadelphia to, to Drexel University College of Medicine, they were even more acute, having had the history here where the school had actually undergone a bankruptcy several years before I joined and was still reeling from some of the changes there. So there was a lot of instability. They had gone through four deans in five years and the faculty weren't sure really whether the school was going to be able to be able to survive the next step. My challenge here was to establish the leadership within the medical school that could provide the infrastructure to carry forward. And I was able to recruit extraordinarily strong uh, chairs. Uh, uh, almost, four, I think, 14 of them, and many vice deans and the administrative infrastructure, the CFO, chief of staff. So put them into place, mentored some of them, and now they're all independently uh, being very successful. So one of the challenges that they have in any of these academic health centers is finding the resources to allow the faculty to do their great work, um, and finding ways to be able to manage the resources, find new resources, leverage the existing uh, assets within the school. And, and they are the faculty that walk the halls. How do you see medical and health professions education changing over the next five to ten years? Well, the practice of medicine is going to change in the next five to ten years, and education has to follow that. And uh, sometimes we do it in reverse. Sometimes education leads the practice, and uh, it's often best, though, to change the practice of medicine so that then that can serve as the example for our learners to be able to witness and it will include more interdisciplinary training, certainly developing higher quality, finding ways to be able to, to reduce costs, identifying ways for practitioners at all levels to be respected in the healthcare system and to practice at their highest level of competency so that you can identify the individuals as a part of a team and allow everyone to be valued as part of that team to try to deliver the care in the most efficient, effective, and patient-centered way. What is your impression of EVMS? Well, I've always had wonderful impressions of uh, Eastern Virginia Medical School over the years because as a family physician, it's always been identified as one of the, uh, the best primary care medical schools in the country, and certainly regionally, but also in the country. And I know over the past several years, it's had enormous uh, growth and stability under the leadership of Dean Pepe and President Lester, especially with the new buildings that have been developed and the infrastructure that's in place. And they've been able to recruit some high quality researchers and develop more research in diabetes and continue the research in reproductive medicine, uh, cancer, and other areas. And it looks as if all the pieces are, are there to be able to develop uh, so that we can advance the school in ways perhaps that I can't imagine yet because I don't know all the assets, but to be a very important educational uh, institution and expand our clinical relevance with the hospital partners that we have in the region, which are very high quality, and invest in our research enterprise so that we can develop a national reputation.